guys, it's Miss Simpson, and today we are starting our math lesson, and this whole week we are going to talk about time. So today we're going to work about telling time and like months in a year, minutes in an hour, seconds in a minute, all of those fun things. But first we're going to start off by how to tell time on a regular clock, not an analog clock or a digital clock. We're going to do it on a regular clock. Okay. So first things first, when you're looking at a clock, you're first going to look at the hour hand. Now, your hour hand is the short hand, and you're going to look at the last number it passed. So if I am looking here, I see that the last number it passed was 7. It's not quite on the 8 yet. It's in between 7 and 8. So I'm going to look at the 7, and then after I figure out my hour with the small hand, I'm going to look at my minute hand, which is the nice, big, long hand. When I'm looking at that big hand, I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to count by five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this clock reads 7, 30. Okay. If it's on, if my minute hand was on the 12th, I would say o'clock, like 12 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I don't say 1260. I would say 12 o'clock. Okay, so start with your small hand and see what's the last number it passed. Then go to your minute hand and start counting by fives. Your minute hand's a long one. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. And then we, um, that would be 60 because 60 minutes are in one whole hour. Okay, so let's take a look at our math chart. Um, one more thing before I move on. Sorry. I want you this week to start practice telling time like this. So when you're around your parents or if you have a clock at home that looks like this, every now and then look up and try to count and tell me what time it is. Have your parents, have them say, okay, I'm practicing reading time on a clock. Can you ask me what the time is every now and then and, and have me use a clock like this? Or if you don't have a clock like this, see if maybe you can get a clock like this. There's um, on your phone or your iPad if you go to the clock app there is a i think i think on the clock app there is an actual clock that you can look at that isn't oh mine doesn't have it but anyway there is apps you can get that have clocks that look like this the regular old clock that you see like in my classroom or um all around the world they have clocks like this so you need to learn how to read them so i want you to be practicing this week Okay, now I'm ready to move on. So we have been doing all kinds of conversions. We started with customary, then we went to metric, and now we're doing time. So let's go ahead and start with the biggest um, amount of time that we typically talk about, and that is years. So you should know most of these. Some of these you're not going to know, but most of them you're going to know. So in one year, there is 12 months. Also in one year, there are 52 weeks. Did you know that? Now, you don't have to have this stuff memorized because you get this star chart with you on any assignment, any test that you ever do for me. But most of the time, we memorize some of the time ones. So, like, um, one year is 12 months. One year is also 52 weeks. We have seven days in a week. One day is 24 hours. One hour is 60 minutes. And one minute is 60 seconds. So, if we wanted to, we could find out how many seconds are in a year. Oh, mind blown. So let's work on some example problems today. So this analog clock below has an hour hand, a minute hand, and a second hand to measure the time. So you notice we have an hour hand, which is our little one. We have a minute hand, which is the long one. And the second hand, which a lot of clocks have second hands. And you know it's a second hand because it's the one that's always ticking in here. And this tells you the seconds that are passed. So um, this time is four because the hour hand just passed the four. And if I count to the six, I have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then it's on 12 seconds because these small little tiny ticks, we can count until 12. Um, so there are 60 seconds in a minute and there are 60 minutes in an hour. The clocks below show the length of a second, a minute, and an hour. So if our start time is three o'clock, this is when 
let me get it a little closer so you can see it. This is when one second has elapsed. So this one little slice of the pie right there, that's one second. One um, minute or 60 seconds elapses. So this would be 301. When one minute or 60 seconds elapses, the second hand has made a full turn around the clock. So this right here, this little red hand, when it goes all the way around the clock, it has made, or it has gone 60 full seconds. One hour or 60 minutes, um, is this is showing that that it has elapsed and the minute hand has made a full turn around the clock. So this minute hand, the longer of them, has gone all the way around the clock. So then that would make it four o'clock. So how does the size of an hour compare to the size of a second? So we should know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. And if you don't know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, we could take a look at our star chart and we could say, okay, in one hour, there are 60 minutes. Okay, so there are 60 seconds in a minute. So if I'm looking again at my star chart, I can say one minute is 60 seconds. So now watch this, guys. So if I take my 60 minutes and I multiply it times 60, it will give me how many seconds are in an hour. So six times six, we're gonna do the zeros trick. Remember, multiply your whole numbers. Six times six is 36 and add your zero. So 60 times 60 is 306, or add your two zeros. Sorry, Miss Simpson's going crazy. Add your two zeros is 3,600 seconds in one hour. So say you wake up in the morning at eight o'clock. An hour later, you look at nine o'clock in the morning. 3,600 seconds have gone by. So there are 3,000 600 seconds in an hour. Okay, let's look at the back here. So this number line is going to show us the relationship between days and weeks. We're going to use a colored pencil, which I only have markers, but to show the one week on the number line. So look at this. This is the day. So to color in one week, I would have to color in the whole number line because there are seven days in one week. So it's asking us now to shade in one day on the number line. So that right there is one day. So if there are seven days in one week, one week is seven times as long as one day. So let's say we put this in an input output table, which is what you guys are used to seeing. So let's say one week is seven days, right? So if I did two weeks, my rule would be times seven. That's what they're telling us there, seven times as long as one day. So if I do two times seven, it'll give me that two weeks is 14 days. Or if I did three weeks and I did my rule times seven, that would give me 21 days. Okay, so let's look down here. So compare the length of a year to the length of a month. Use a model to help. So let's color in one year. So this is one year. And this is one month. So one year <clears throat> is 12 times as long as one month. So if I have my input output table, which I'm gonna go ahead and do on another piece of paper, I don't have a whole lot of room. If I have my input output table, and I know that what was it? One year is 12 months. That's my first number. And remember, you can always get that first number by looking at your, your time part on your conversion chart, your math chart. So if I know one year is 12 months, what is two years? 
How many months is two years? Well, you're thinking your rule is one times 12 because one times 12 equals 12. And you also know right here, you already told me one year is 12 times as long as one month. So if I do two times 12, that will give me 24. So in two years, there are 24 months. Now let's try for three years. So three years times 12 would be 36. So I have 36 months in three years. Okay, so let's try minutes and seconds. So I know it says two minutes equals how many seconds? So I want you right now on a piece of paper to write down two minutes, and I'm just gonna put min because that's the abbreviation, equals how many seconds? And I'm just gonna put SEC because that is an abbreviation for seconds. Okay, so on your paper, I want you to write input, output. So if I'm looking at my star chart, I've got to find the one that matches, right? So I'm looking one minute is 60 seconds, right? So if one minute is 60 seconds, two minutes is going to be how many seconds? So I want you to pause the video and I want you to figure this out for yourself. Two minutes is how many seconds? Okay, so you should have unpaused by now and you should have found your rule. So you should know one times blank equals 60. That's how we find our rule. So one times 60 is 60, right? So now all I have to do is two times 60. So if I have 60 times two, it would give me 120 seconds. So guess what, guys? You could even go and you could do three minutes. You could do four minutes. You could go five, six, seven, eight. You could go as high as you want to. All you have to do is continue to multiply by 60 because that is our rule in our input output table. So let's go ahead and write our answer. Okay. Four years is how many months? So I want you to write that on your paper. Four years equals blank months. I'm going to get you started with your input output table, but then I'm going to have you solve it. So write input, output. I'm going to look on my star chart or in your brain, but I'm going to look on my star chart and I'm going to see that one year is 12 months. Okay. So if one year is 12 months, four years is how many months? Okay, I want you to pause the video right now and I want you to solve this. Okay, so I hope that you said one times blank equals 12. So if one year is 12 months, I'm multiplying by 12. So four or 12 times four, four times 12, however you wanna do it, is 48, or if you know your 12s multiplication tables. So four years is 48 months. Okay, so this part you should be pretty familiar with. The only thing that's different is you're using um, time now, your years, months, days, seconds. The numbers get a little bit bigger. What happens when I ask you to compare. <gasps> Ooh. What happens when I ask you to compare? What are you going to do? Here's what I would do. I would do the same kind of thing. I would do my, my input output table, but I would just start with three years. I wouldn't worry about this 35 months right now. I would start with three years. So I'm going to start my input output table with years and months. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, if one year is 12 months, I need to figure out three years is how many months. Okay, go ahead and solve this and then I'll tell you how to compare those two numbers. So I hope that you got your rule is times 12. 
And you did three times 12 and got 36. Okay, so now we know three years, and I'm gonna write that below. Three years equals 36 months. Guess what? Now you can easily compare. You know three years is 36 months, so 35 months is less than. So you would have three years is greater than 35 months because you know 36 months is equal to three years now. So let's go ahead and do two days and 40 hours. Again, I always start off with just that first number right there. I'm not going to worry about the 40 hours. I'm just going to start off with the days. So go ahead and write your input output table. So you should know that one day is 24 hours. We need to figure out two days. So two days is how many hours? Go ahead, pause the video, and I want you to solve that for me, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so let's go ahead. I hope that you got your rule as times 24, and you got 2 times 24 equals, so let's take a look, 24 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. So two days is 48 hours. So I'm going to write that underneath here. Two days equals 48 hours. So if two days is 48 hours, you would have to say, okay, well, that means that that is greater than. Because two days is 48 hours. Well, 40 is smaller than 48. So we'd have to know that two days is greater than. Okay, so today on your assignment, let me show you what it looks like. You're going to do the same exact problems that we just did in the video together. There are only, so, okay, there are eight on the first, so you're going to have to tell me nine weeks equals how many days. Four years is how many months. Five minutes is how many seconds. And three hours is how many days. So you're going to use an input-output table to solve this. You're going to have to do um, comparing and contrasting. <laughs> I'm thinking of reading. Greater than, less than, or equal to. And remember, I would use an input output table to solve that as well. And then there are two word problems that I want you to try and solve by yourself. Okay. Again, there are eight on the front, two on the back. So that is only 10 questions. All right, my loves, y'all have fun solving this. Tomorrow we're going to move on and we're going to start working on something called elapsed time. Remember, your goal today and tomorrow and for the whole rest of this week is to start practicing telling time on an analog clock, which is just a regular clock like this. So if you have a, an analog clock, get it out and start practicing. All right. Love y'all. Bye.